Have you ever heard of super special oysters whose rare quality and existence displace all products on the market? Here is a presentation of their origin. Green Ocean International is a family group whose business model defined in 1984 has not changed and consists in mastering the entire production chain of bivalve mollusks for the domestication of cultivated wild species such as oysters, mussels, clams and scallops. Thanks to the mastery of innovative techniques at each stage, from genetic selection to the production of mass in the open sea, Grand Ocean has developed and mastered each link in the production chain while taking into account its adaptation to farming techniques of each individual country. Recognized worldwide as the most modern and innovative hatchery, and with its extensive control of the entire bivalve production chain up to the commercial size, Grand Ocean offers unparalleled know-how to apprehend all situations, even the most ambitious, with the quality of finished products as its top priority. Here is, in full transparency, an overview of our business and our know-how developed by the family group for 40 years. We will start with the hatchery unit located in La Rochelle. Its goal is to provide 100% triploid 1x1 one one juvenile oysters that will reach the size of 1 mm. The capacity of the unit is 600 to 800 million seeds per spawning. You can see here the swimming larvae two days before the metamorphosis in the tank. In these images, the larvae tank empties to harvest the larvae. Their sticky appearance shows that they are almost ready for metamorphosis. The tank of 100,000 liters will contain at the beginning of larval breeding 2 billion larvae or 20 larvae per milliliter and at the end, before metamorphosis, will contain a concentration of 3 to 4 larvae per milliliter. On these 16 collectors, the larvae are recovered, then washed and sorted by size in order to eliminate the smallest ones before returning to a clean tank. This activity requires only two technicians and the duration of larval rearing is between 13 and 15 days. In this hatchery, stainless steel was preferred for all the installations. Here you see the release of the larvae in one of our four tanks of 100,000 liters. Decanted seawater filtered in fine membranes of 1.2 microns, then treated with the UV and heated up to 27 degrees, ensures the best sanitary environment for stable maintenance of the bacteriological and probiotic conditions of larval rearing. Almost clean wastewater is nevertheless decanted and filtered in order to ensure total retention of plankton and larval biological production within the hatchery unit. Of course, such a large amount of larvae requires a large production of phytoplankton. Indeed, bivalve mollusks are notoriously vegetarian and mainly consume a cocktail of unicellular planktonic algae similar to what they are likely to find in the natural environment. The daily production capacity is 50,000 liters of phytoplankton, concentrated by a successive bloom process. The hatchery uses several different phytoplankton strains and the culture is done in phytobioreactor of 5,000 liters. The phytoplankton production only requires one technician and the whole process is semi-automated, especially in the washing of the tanks and the distribution of phytoplankton. Today, the small larvae are ready for metamorphosis and will join the settlement room. Each of these pots contains about 10 million larvae. The larvae are settled on microbrisure, which corresponds to oyster shell powder 
approximately 1 million larvae per settlement basin. The room here contains 1,500 settlement basins. Each table of 16 basins is independently supplied in phytoplankton. The water is recirculated, which allows an homogeneous distribution of the phytoplankton. The size of this room makes it possible to always have a clean and dry area acting as a following space. You see here the distribution of about 20 ml of larvae on the microbrisure located at the bottom of the basin. At first, the larvae will keep swimming and then stop and start the settlement and metamorphosis on the microbrisure. Each particle of microbrisure receives one larva and each larva chooses its own particle of microbrisure so that once metamorphosed, the small oysters are all separated from each other and 100% one by one. A plastic spoon placed in the basin during the larvae distribution illustrates, one hour later, the phenomenon of rapid fixation. The rate of larvae fixed on this spoon is already a very significant proof that during the metamorphosis, 100% of the larvae are ready for the settlement. Few days later, the small oysters grew and the microbrisure was removed by sieving. They will then be sorted on increasing meshes of 400, 600, 800 microns and one millimeter. These successive sorts guarantee a perfect growth and homogeneity of the batches, which will be sorted every four days and kept for three weeks until reaching the output size of one millimeter. In these pots, there are about 1 million spat versus 10 million in the larval state for the same volume 8 days earlier. So we can see how fast the growth of biomass is and how it requires a rigorous follow-up since in less than 10 days the mass of these young oysters has been multiplied by 10. At the end of the three weeks, at the size of one millimeter, they will leave the hatchery and join the natural environment in nurseries located in abandoned salt marshes of the Ildere, rehabilitated for this purpose. You see here two nurseries side by side of 10 hectares each. The nursery is mainly made up of a very large lagoon area where water will circulate in a closed circuit. The goal is to have a natural production of phytoplankton. Thanks to its design, this lagoon area favors islets, inaccessible for the predators and perfect for the avifauna, which finds there a strong attraction in terms of nesting, as well as a resting area during high tide. The closed circuit is set in motion by an Archimedean screw. This machine, designed by Grenotion, has the advantage of consuming very little energy. It also applies to the water a slow translation movement which avoids the destruction of the microfauna, thus protecting the sanitary quality while oxygenating the water. The nursery is made of 80 raceways, each with 22 breeding buckets, 
which represents only 2% of the whole area, thus limiting the anthropogenic impact on these protected wetlands, while exploiting at best an agroecological model that does not require any inputs. Raised by 50 cm, the water will fill the raceways, which will then, according to the principle of upwelling, go through the canvas of the buckets on which the oysters are raised. Regularly washed, these small oysters maintain their one by one feature while keeping a regular growth. Once a week, they are sorted on machines adapted to each size up to the size of 4 mm in order to maintain the homogeneous growth. The smallest one, coming from the third sort, which means the ones that remain on the same millimeter mesh after three sieving are eliminated. Depending on the size, the sorted oysters are distributed at a determined quantity, which is adapted to the flow rate and therefore to the traffic capacity of the system. This process has largely taken into account the ergonomic aspects in order to limit as much as possible the difficulty of the tasks. In this bucket, 60,000 small oysters of 3 mm are distributed for growth of 7 more days before the next sieving. Once the size of 4 mm reached, the seeds will leave the nursery to join the open sea structures, which will allow them to multiply the weight by 10 again. Our seeds will join our facilities on the fishing harbor of Lao Shell and this upscaling will result in an adaptation of the breeding technology. This time, the small oysters will be raised in the open sea in a lantern system. A lantern is made of 20 compartments, delimited by plates, on which are put about 2,500 spats of 4 mm. These lanterns are sheathed by a disposable net circled by elastic bands. The building is located alongside the fishing port and thus provides easy access to our two factory ships used in the offshore production. This boat is leaving to deposit 15 million seeds on our offshore long lines. The distance between the harbor and the long lines is 12 kilometers, which justifies the speed of the ship, thus being able to make two trips a day. The breeding in lanterns, which are permanently in the water, allows extremely quick growth. Nevertheless, this quick growth can degrade the quality of the shell and more precisely make it very fragile. 
That's why Green Ocean has developed a tidal turbine system. The tidal currents will make the lantern rotate and thus four times a day at mid-tide will brew the oysters in order to harden them. This technique will emphasize the genetic selection on the shape of the shell which will become very round and very hard and the oysters will consequently maintain a perfect shape until the end of the breeding. Here we see the lantern under the water in rotation and the oysters in the compartment that are rolled on top of each other. The tidal turbine is calculated to make it rotate from 4 to 8 hours per day. After 4 to 5 weeks, we obtain a very high quality product and a product that will be able to stay out of the water for a long time. The harvest phase comes early in the morning. We use the second ship, which is equipped for harvesting and emptying the lanterns. Here, the lanterns are handled with the crane. Seeds mass being multiplied by 10 again. The lanterns are open in adapted compartments. The nets are cut and the oysters recovered on a trail and then they will go through a washer and be loaded in crates of 400 kilo. Of course, as you can see, they are still one by one. They have a perfect shape and they remain very clean thanks to the rotation. Once arrived at the harbor, the batch will return to the building to undergo a water sieving operation that will separate the commercial sizes. A big trail, loaded by a distributor trolley, allows to continuously supply the water sieving machine, avoiding any handling effort. Two hours is enough to screen 10 million spats. Spats being perfectly distributed on the grids will move forward smoothly, which allows a very effective segregation by size. The commercial sizes correspond to the mesh size of the breeding enclosures used by the oyster farmers. So we propose oysters on a 6mm, 8mm and 10mm square grid at a price of 8 to 12 euros per southern seeds. In this box, these seeds sieved on a 10mm grid will be delivered everywhere in Europe. They have a very homogeneous size. We can see that small oysters already have a round and perfect shape determined by genetics which will be preserved throughout the breeding. This is a unique qualitative characteristic on the world market.
characteristic born from the zootechnical mastery dedicated for this purpose throughout the Grand Ocean breeding chain. An extension of the main activity of the group is to develop a new production unit in Portugal in the middle of an estuary. We equipped the area with our new rollback production system for producing super special oysters. This system uses floating baskets equipped with an internal float and is set in motion by the tides and the waves. Thanks to this perpetual movement, these rolled oysters, whose growth is willingly limited, will use the food energy not to produce shell but to produce meat. In the end, we have oysters with a maximum fate ratio. In addition, the shell will be very hard, clean, and will have a perfect shape. These baskets have the advantage of being very ergonomic, indestructible, and adaptable to every place and all the breeding conditions. They are also able to carry up to 20 kilos of oysters. This tidal powered system requires no manpower for brewing oysters. It operates in a complete autonomy and simultaneously on the entire livestock, regardless of the number of installed roll bag and the surface of the oyster bed. We see here oysters with a perfect round shape, very hardened, only after three months of breeding. The oyster has a very high rate of flesh, usually from 20 to 25%, which associated with the quality of the shell makes it a very high quality product for the French way of consumption. And I will end this video presentation with a beautiful image. Since we are, as shellfish producers, people who have the chance to live by the sea, why not take full advantage of it? Grand Ocean developed on the other side of the world, in South Pacific, in the Tuamotu archipelago, on Fakarava near Tahiti, a hatchery of black pearl oysters, Pintada margaritifera. Here are some pictures of this polynon species, Pintada margaritifera, which is much better known for its ability to produce poerava, the beautiful black pearl of Tahiti. Here is a beautiful range of our selected spawners, age of 3 years. The selection is based on three criteria, growth, color and thickness of the shell. This rainbow of colors guarantees a high quality graft for a shimmering black pearl. The young oyster is able to express a colorful orientation probably determined by genetics, offering a magnificent range of colors. Although still apparent after blackening of the shell, what is the inheritance of colored dominance? It will probably take many years to answer this question. Nevertheless, this six month old young pearl oyster already has extremely encouraging growth and shell characteristics. The collectors have a remarkable density of oysters and the growth is very homogeneous. Six months after the grafting, the pearl already have a nice growth as well as the salt black color guarantee that we will obtain a very high quality pearl after two years time that is required in order to have the best results and the best quality. Grand Ocean is pleased to be the first to develop the controlled breeding of this species until the graftable size, which we hope will bring a service and a product to the Polynesian pearl farmers, allowing them to further improve the quality of the black pearl of Tahiti. You'll find on this app 
and in details all the videos used for the making of this summary of Grenotian activity.